Today I'm going to show you how to make an awesome sourdough bread with cheddar, smoked paprika and oregano. It is so good. Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. Today we're going to bake an awesome sourdough bread with some added spices that really take it to the next level. The top is sprinkled with Parmigiano Reggiano, which really gives it a satisfying crunch. It's a wonderful bread with a hearty dish or just by itself with some butter on top. Well, enough plugging this bread, let's get started. The written recipe, the ingredients and the amounts are linked in the description. We start by mixing the levain. Add 100 grams of mature sourdough starter, 100 grams of whole grain wheat flour, 100 grams of bread flour and 200 grams of water. Mix it until it's completely combined. Scrape down the sides so that you can see through the container and add an elastic band so you can monitor the growth. Leave on your kitchen counter until doubled. Then we'll auto ease the flour. We'll take 800 grams of bread flour, four grams of dried oregano, 10 grams of smoked paprika, mix it well, and uh, add 450 grams of water. We'll reserve the last 50 grams of water for later when we mix the dough. Put the auto leasing flour under a dishcloth and wait for the levain to have uh, doubled in size. When the levain has doubled, sprinkle the salt over the auto leased flour and uh, dissolve it using the remaining 50 grams of water. Add 400 grams of the levain and mix it thoroughly so that everything is completely combined. Leave the dough to rest for 30 minutes with a cloth over top. Now we're starting the bulk fermentation and we'll do three stretch and folds with uh, 30 minutes in between. We'll do the first stretch and fold this way. Uh, wet your primary hand and uh, grab the dough in the back, pull it up as far as it can go and fold it in over itself. Turn the bowl a quarter turn and repeat. Pull the dough up and fold it in over itself. Then turn the bowl a quarter turn, pull the dough up and fold it in over itself. And then the last one, grab the dough in the back, pull it up as far as it can go and fold it in over itself. Leave it to rest for 30 minutes. And then it's time for the second stretch and fold. This is where we mix in the cheese. So um, wet your hands and uh, sprinkle about a quarter of the cheese over top of the dough. Take the back and stretch it as far as it goes and fold it in over the dough. Turn the bowl around, sprinkle a quarter of the cheese over top and stretch the back as far as it goes in over itself. Then turn the bowl a quarter turn, sprinkle a quarter of the cheese over top and do another stretch and fold and then sprinkle the rest of the cheese over top and do the last stretch and fold. The cheese will be completely distributed when we do the third stretch and fold. Leave the dough to rest for another 30 minutes under a cloth. Then it's time for the third stretch and fold. It's completely as before, just stretch and fold and leave the dough to rest until it's doubled in size. Uh, it should take about 90 minutes if your kitchen is about 21 degrees Celsius, uh, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. When the dough has doubled in size, it's time to divide the dough and then pre-shape it. Pour the dough out onto your unfloured kitchen counter, divide it into two, and take one dough ball and uh, put it to the side. Grab each side of the dough, stretch it slightly, and fold it in over itself so you have a little package. Flip the dough over and uh, put your bench scraper behind the dough and pull it forward so that the front of the dough will be pulled down underneath the dough ball. This will create a tight surface. Once you can't go any further, put the bench scraper in front of the dough and uh, push it forward and flip it around so that you can pull it again. Keep going until you have a very taut surface. Repeat with the other dough ball and leave them to rest on the kitchen counter for about 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes, it's time for the final shaping. Start by flouring your bannetons with rice flour so that they don't stick. We're going to be making a batard. Take a dough ball and uh, flip it around so that the top is against the kitchen table. Flatten the dough to make a rectangle. Wrap each corner, fold it in, and then kind of stitch the bread by folding one side over the other side until it's completely stitched. Flip the dough over and use your bench scraper to uh, tighten the surface even more. Then grab the dough with your bench scraper and flip it into the banneton so that the top is downwards. Repeat with the other bread and put that into the banneton. Put each of the banetons into separate plastic bags. 
Now it's time for the final proof. Mine took about three hours, but you should check about every hour or so with a poke test. A poke test is when you put your finger into the dough and watch how it springs back. If it springs back completely and fills the hole, that means the dough still needs to proof. If it springs back slowly and leaves a little indentation, that means it's ready for shaping. If it doesn't spring back at all, that means it's overproofed and you need to get it in the oven as soon as possible. You need to estimate when your dough is ready to bake and turn on the oven before that. Uh, you need to turn it on to 260 degrees Celsius, that's 500 Fahrenheit. You should add a baking steel to the oven and let it heat for at least an hour so that the baking steel is completely saturated with heat. Right before you're ready to bake, you should add a pan with a rolled up towel, pour over a whole kettle of boiling water and close the door uh, so that uh, you will have steam in the oven once you put the bread in. It's important to note that the oven should not be on fan assisted because once you open the oven door, all the steam will blow out. Get your breads ready on a peel. I have this nice peel where you can have two breads at a time, but you can just put them separately. Score the dough however you'd like and uh, put them in your oven and uh, bake for 20 minutes with steam. Then open the oven door and remove the steaming pans, turn down to 230 degrees Celsius, that's 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and bake for another 20 minutes. When you're on the last stretch of the bake, you should prepare the cheeses for the topping. Grate 100 grams of mature cheddar and 50 grams of Parmigiano Reggiano and mix it well together. When the 20 minutes are up, uh, open the door and add the cheese to the top, close the door and bake for another 5 minutes. After those five minutes are up, take the bread out of the oven and uh, let them cool on a wire rack. <laughs> That's it. We've made awesome cheddar sourdough bread. That's how you make a cheddar sourdough loaf. Every time I make this bread, my entire family goes completely nuts and eat it all. There's never anything left to freeze. Well, time has come to look at this beautiful loaf. As beautiful as it is, I prefer to reside in my belly. <laughs>